mom. One of the issues that we run up against here in Alaska, which many of our amazing standouts are Alaskans, is we do not have nearly the variety and plethora of options that you can find in the lower 48, where Mr. Chris has started this app and where the majority of the United States obviously resides. Since Alaskans might not always have those alternatives that are brought to them on Veebs or just alternative options for buying from companies that do stand for their values, what are ways that we can take a stand and maximize our freedom even if we aren't able to help but buy from these companies? Yeah, that's a good point. So we support free market economies. Anyone who's conservative supports the idea that the power really lies in the hands of the consumer. It's the same idea that the power really lies in the hands of the people for the government. We hold businesses accountable. We hold the government accountable. And we do that through our purchasing power. But not only is it a problem here in Alaska, it's a problem really in any rural or semi-rural community across the United States. If you've got your, you know, local general market where it, it, it's the only store within hundreds of miles or you've got these communities like even here in Anchorage for anyone who's taken an Alaskan cruise you've seen some of our rural communities or if you've come to Anchorage we've got a couple main grocery stores but now they're talking about a massive corporate merger in the lower 48 that would actually merge those major grocery stores together so we would really only have one grocery store and Walmart and then, like you're saying, that it really limits our options. And so when you want to shop around, I think we'd still, fortunately, in Alaska, if you're talking about peanut butter, we'd still have enough peanut butter brands. If you're talking about French onion soup, it might be a little bit more limited, mm-hmm. honestly. Ice cream, you know, we I think we still eat more ice cream per capita than any other state. I still don't know why, but <laughs> we definitely contribute to that. So in Anchorage, we're still okay, but it still is a really good question for all of these other smaller communities that's not just an Alaska situation, but for all of rural. And I think fortunately, because of the widespread use of internet, we have a lot of internet options. You know, a lot of people would sort of just default to Amazon or Walmart Online, both of which ship. But I think that there's been this great spring up of mom and pop shops online that also widely ship. And we see that even out to a lot of our rural communities, of course, the cost of shipping factors into the cost of products. But that has been a, a real blessing, I think, for being able to empower consumers to diversify the brands that they can shop at. It'll be interesting to see how Veebs accommodates for that since you can't easily scan that barcode. But I'd like to see an ability for consumers to be able to get get supplies from different locations, especially in our smaller communities. Absolutely. Another thing that I can see end up being a problem, even with that though, is in in business, consumers will always go for the most cost effective option. They're going yeah. to balance product and supply and demand and price with convenience and how much satisfaction they get from it. So what would be your encouragement to our audience of you know, giving over that extra three, four, five dollars in shipping to get a product that's not as easily accessible. So I think I, I I know people like to get cheaper products. I mean, this is one of the reasons why some of our big box stores do so well. But I also think people do shop their values. And so we see people who lean towards certain values or certain um yeah, if they if some if a company is aligning with someone's values or they're offering a product that they want, they are willing to buy to pay more, which is why some companies with more expensive product actually do better or even more expensive marketing do better. So I think for um, the ability to say, you know, if you actually realize what these companies are doing and how they're affecting the bigger picture of your, existence if it's almost like voting if you if you want things to change then it begins with you and then i actually just had this conversation recently with someone in your generation who was saying you know i don't vote 
And because it doesn't matter. And it's kind of the same argument. The, you know, the ice cream I buy or the tennis shoes I buy or the peanut butter I buy doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter, then how do you get around the Budweiser effect? If it doesn't matter, how do you get around the Planet Fitness right. effect? Your few dollars does matter, especially when we do it in bulk. And I made the metaphor about voting because one of the arguments was, well, the voting systems are messed up. Okay. I think anything built by a human is going to have inherent flaws. And I come from a world where we, you know, analyzed and then and modified internal controls to fix some of those inherent flaws. And IT systems have inherent flaws, just like your home computer has an inherent flaw and you put IT controls around it. Banking systems have inherent flaws, but all of us do online banking and our bank system, our bank accounts are fine, right? So you can set up internal controls. We all inherit, we knew this intuitively to mitigate against these flaws and against attacks, et cetera. And I said, it's a little bit like a snowstorm. If there is a dusting, then you can still see the, um, the ice, the gravel, maybe a little bit of the dog droppings that are still on the road. And you, you can see the flaws. When there is a blizzard, all you see is the whiteout. And that's what voter turnout's like. If there is a dusting, you're still going to see the bumps and the bruises and the stuff in the system. But when there's a blizzard turnout, then the effect of the people really matters. And that's what I think it is with consumer effect. Uh, yeah, you know what? A snowflake probably coming down is like, I don't really matter. I'm just a snowflake. Right. But the fact is, when we turn out, if you if you don't show up, yeah, you're contributing to it just being a dusting. And the companies still get away with imposing their values and their corporate agenda. And really, you're talking about trillions and trillions of dollars on the global economy. Yeah, we're we're being taken. But if the people resist and say, I'm not going to do that, I'm instead going to give to the one company not participating in that company becomes the global leader. Then all of a sudden the people have spoken and the blizzard starts to turn the other way. The power is really in the hands of the consumer. The companies can only put product out. And if we're saying, you know, as some people have said to me, well, it doesn't really matter because it's everywhere. I, you know, I have to watch these shows because there's no other shows. I have to buy these products because there's no other products. If you're just a helpless victim along for the ride, well then, yeah, then it's just gonna happen to you. But I don't actually think that's the case. I don't think that's the way the system's set up. The system is set up for the consumer to be empowered. We just have to take that initiative to do so. It reminds me of that quote that you are ridiculously in charge Fact. of your own life. I find it interesting that as we, as we more and more as a society move into this mindset of a victim mentality, oppressor and oppressed, just how many areas of our life it impacts. I don't vote because it doesn't matter Great because I'm not empowered to do anything. I don't take a stand against these companies and it's just, it is so sinister, this effect that it has on people because it truly is the mass infection of cowardice. Hmm. By choosing to be disempowered or even believing that you are the victim, you're giving up courage and you're giving up your ability to take a stand for what you believe in. That's a good point. So let me ask you, when did you see a whole bunch of people take a stand and it inspire you? Hmm. I really liked seeing everything that happened with the Budweiser, Dylan Mulvaney incident. That was extremely inspiring. It was also humorous just to see a company be so out of touch with its customer base. Hmm. But that was particularly inspiring for me personally, just because it's, that's not the kind of product you would expect people to boycott. And it's not the kind of product I would expect people to boycott so intensely and for sure. so long and so successfully as well. Another thing that, an event that really inspired me was when, <laughs> when all those Reddit users bought GameStop stock. Oh yeah. And totally saved <laughs> the company from going under. And it's just really interesting to me that within the last five years, we're just seeing more and more incidents of consumers rallying together to out of the blue in yeah. a historic moment, make or break a company's fortune. And it's extremely inspiring to kind of 
take back power from corporate <laughs> from corporate America and to not have to submit or be controlled by the big man in the sky, you know? Yeah, I think those are both really good examples of inspirational and like you said, unexpected acts mm -hmm. when there's this this move across. But I think, so something else that happened recently is we saw an article that Ben and Jerry's parent company decided to drop them. I know, right? Wow. And I, I think it might be around some of the same things we're talking about that they're just losing a lot of their customer base because of some of the really strong you know, like Chris said, at 100% political stands they've taken that really don't align with 100% of their ice cream eating pace. And in, at some point, the, it ultimately comes down to making money and you got to make money. And isn't that what this is about? I liked what he said. We want to just get people back to, are we making money or are we not? Which is what free market system is supposed to be about.